to game number three between Beck Boom and Aurora. Tiebreakers on the line here. Aurora, they're out, of course. Uh, we know that. But Bet Boom, they can secure top two with this. If you had asked me which team would have a chance to go to the upper bracket, but then would lose, be the only team, in fact, to lose to a team that has not won a single series yet in this second group stage, I would have said Bet Boom. <laughs> that is their MO. They tend to fall flat in embarrassing fashion, it feels like, even though they play so well up until a point, but I don't know what it is. But of course, it's just the beginning of the game, Cinderin. Let's not count our hatches until chicken. Okay. Let's, uh, so far there's one hatch, and Bet Boom have opened it, but they still haven't gone down it yet. That's We're a, in time. Is that actually a trophy, by the way? That looks really is. sick. There's no way that's the actual trophy. It is, apparently. Production's telling me that is. Ooh. Ooh. Can I get a miniature version for myself? <laughs> yeah, you have a great. thing with uh, getting trophies on time, so I'm sure you'll get it. <laughs> yeah, thank you. So, uh, I really like this invoker pick from Bet Boom. I think this was the best solution. I honestly feel like they were a little bit cornered in this draft, but they found an out here with GPK going Quaswex invoker. Now, the question is how the lane is going to go, because I want to say, historically speaking, Lena, one of the harder matchups for Invoker a lot of the time, uh, and Lorinov has been playing a good tournament, I would say. I think he's really made a name for himself here playing for Aurora, and aside from that, Bet Boom side lane's not really the strongest we've seen from them. We've seen, we have the techies uh, from Save, which has usually been coupled with some stronger laner than Kunkka, like they've played it in a kill lane with like Mars or with Centaur. Uh, this one with Kunkka is a little bit on the weaker side in terms of just burst damage output. And the bottom lane, if you're playing more, if you're happy to play with Undying, the Snapfire is a little bit of an X factor here. Curious to see how this one plays out. Yeah, not a popular hero. One in four records so far. I mean, picking against the Tombstone certainly makes sense, but why has this hero not been picked, actually? She was really strong not that long ago. I would argue she's undervalued, actually. With how this tournament has played so far and what the meta is, she's pretty good in lane with a lot of the strength off laners that have been popular. Uh, her ulti synergizes very well with many of them too. She can scale. She can fight well around Roche. That, I feel like you ask a lot of dumb questions. That one was pretty good. Because I don't really have the answer, and usually I do, because your questions are very easy. <laughs> But this one's hard. What's the meaning of life? Snapfire. Wow. So cookies? Eat cookies with grandma. Okay. I can be down with that, depending on what the cookie is, of course. Turn and who the grandma is. <laughs> yeah, if it's just some random grandma, maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> Man, that would be a little awkward, probably. I would be more likely to eat ran cookies with random grandma than random someone else, though. Yeah. There's, that's, a, there's that, a higher chance it would be a good time. That's fair. Toronto, so far, Tokyo. good start in the lanes for Bet Boom. Yeah, playing his favorite support, or so it seems, uh, the old Undying. Uh, how good is EMP these days against the, the newish Medusa? I don't know if I've seen this matchup, the Quaswex Invoker versus... It's good. It burns a lot. Uh, what's the capped burn on... Let me see. How do you see this in, in the game, actually? You click on spells. Yeah, but he doesn't have it skilled right now, so I actually have to, or he doesn't have it active, the EMP, so I have to look him up outside. Okay. You could just wait for him to do that. You know. So EMP capped is 625 mana burned, okay. and then it does 60% of the burn in damage, so it will burn the 625, and then it will do 60% to the mana shield after that, so right. probably like yeah, go eight, your eight, 850 or something mana taken away with that. Not it, bad. It's very, very good. And 23 is actually in huge trouble here. He'll have to use his wand, and he is dry on resources in this top lane, so the harassment. Yeah, and his CS is nothing really to write home about either. Uh, but mid lane, not so much the case for Bet Boom, as GPK sitting on 14 and 2 versus the 21 and 10 Lauren off. So definite advantage for Aurora here, mid lane matchup. I think this is, okay, Ollie going to town, but save has the Lotus, so. I think this is kind of an expected outcome in this top lane, I would say that I, I was talking about how this is a weaker techies lane than the Centaur or the Mars one is, but against Medusa in particular, 
Krunk actually does quite well. Medusa is not a super high harassment type of hero that bullies you out, neither is ET, so you get to get a lot of Tidebringer swings in. Oh, this is very bad for GPK. Yep. Tier 2 tower getting some pop shots in early on. Don't see that all too often. And Tornado will ensure one last hit here for GPK, but yeah, he is uh, struggling. This is the struggle bus. Yep. Nice. Uh, despite all that, I still like the Invoker pick. I think you're going to have to pick your poison here. Do you want a better laner against Lina, or do you actually want some sort of solution to Medusa? Because you don't have one. Yeah. So I think this is the better choice overall, especially against Aurora, who tend to not snowball the games mega hard. Then you can lose one lane and still, right, if the macro is good. Oh, uh, <laughs> thanks for the gold, says yeah, Jabs. That was the most. <laughs> He just waddled over, completely ignoring the auto attacks. You know he's going to cast it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> With, of course, the counter little shredder, which is, I would assume, the main reason this here was picked. And, of course, just adds uh, extra icing on the cake uh, that the Mortimers is actually very good in the Mars Arena as well. You just gave me an idea for a cosmetic for Snapfire. What's that? A little cheddar. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. Except how would that, how would that, is like cheese whiz coming out? I mean, yeah. look at the Bane taunt. I'm sure anything goes. That's true. So, it's par for the course. Actually, it's what she gets when she destroys the tombstone with it. Then she gets a little cheddar. Oh, that's a very Radiant's specific interaction. I like it. Attack. No, I meant you get gold for the tombstone. Oh. And you call gold cheddar. Yeah, that's true. There you go. Good job. Thank you so much. That's Toronto, Tokyo heading to try to contest this eventual power rune to come. Looks like it's going to get some company, but really it's the top side that we're looking at. It will be bottom, though, and it is a haste. Oh. Will he have to snag it? I mean, GPK is not exactly in position to haste. use it anyway to try and gank. There's something about undying with haste that's just comical. <laughs> Zombies are not meant to be fast, you know. I mean, they could go for this mid attempt. The tombstone is playing. All right. And there's the oh, blast off from save. Loranov gets off his ult, but he will fall first to save's right click. Ends up being a one for one for save's life, but save is the one getting the first blood gold as well. And of course, just being around that will help GPK out a decent amount. Also nice to see Loranov's play under pressure there, just instantly drops everything he has on the techie so it at least turns into a trade, not trying to get fancy or anything. He knows he's dead. He will output the maximum to Radiant. trade it over, and they also get the tombstone again with the snap fire. Got a little cheddar there. Which will head over and get the wisdom as well. Really hungry now. Yeah. yeah, Nightfall again. It feels like he's playing... Uh, Three heroes this tournament. Morphling, I maybe have seen him play Medusa actually, but Morphling, Sven, and a little bit of Life Stealer on the side. And Meepo when he's feeling frisky. That, that doesn't count. That was just, a, that was not a game of Dota. It was two games of Dota. Well, the one that we cast was not a game of Dota. We also cast the other one. That we played it with Chen. <laughs> I yes. don't remember that at all. Yeah. It's been a long two group stages, Cinderin. Four How do you not remember that? It's the only Chen game we cast, and they cheesed them with Chen Meepo. Yeah, I do remember the Chen. I don't remember the Meepo, though. Oh, the Chen was more of a carry that game. So yeah. That's that's just Chen, though. Yeah, so, I mean, that was the game that you thought that they might have forgotten about Chen. <laughs> yeah, it was OG. Yeah. Yep. Or they just felt confident that they could. Hey, this hero's surely not that good. Yep. It yep. was all the way back in group stage number one, though, so it has zero bearings on the ultimate result here. Oh, look at this stack. That's going to be a juicy one uh, for Miero to take if that's how they want it. I mean, it might take a bit of a group effort with Toronto Tokyo as well as save. And Invis rune was taken. So another denial for that bottle on Lorenoff. Do you say Lorenoff or Lornoff? Lorenoff. Okay, so neither. Lara Croft. That's what it sounds like what you just said, basically. Cute level four now. I mean, how much 
gank potential does this Aurora lineup have for that uh, mid lane? Is under attack. Not the best. Like shutting down GPK would be a really good play for Aurora overall. Yeah, they don't have the best. ET is a bit tricky to land onto the Invoker together with Lina. The Snapfire could potentially go for rotation in, but uh, it, it's unlikely to really happen much. I think this is going to be quite static for a while. Most likely lane to get Dove is probably the Medusa that I think Betboom would be really eager to put their tombstone to use up there, place it in some obscure position where the Snapfire doesn't find it right away and turn it into a dive, but already 23 is quite the difficult kill. Three points in the mana shield. Always looks so weird looking at Medusa's skill build. The only hero in the game that can have five points in an ability. Yeah. In that is. mana shield. It looks it just looks off. But Oh, we should get used to it. Dota 3 will have five abilities per hero on oh. average, Cinderin. That sounds interesting. That's right. What would be the extra ability of techies? Mm. A fourth unit. Dyer he gets four game. units instead of three. Techies has three units? Yeah. Has, there's three. Oh, you mean squeeze three William. bodies. Okay. And what does the fourth dude do? Then they use him as a bomb. Yeah, he is the bomb. Q is going to get EMP. We'll be able to cookie out, but Arcane Boots will certainly help his cause, and I'm sure that the Medusa eventually will feel the benefits of that as well. As the arena coming out from Jabs, GPK is the target, LSA, and the burst. All right, you asked about the ganking potential. This will do. Yeah, it did if you take break four units. If you bring the Mars. Now the pressure onto the Tier 1. Toronto Tokyo looking to set things up with this Tombstone. As a TP will be completed by Miero, has the boat ready to go. Torrent will connect onto Q. That might be the one that they end up netting. Maybe not the best kill, but better than nothing. If he would have saved his cookie there, he might actually have lived. But he cookied before the X pulled him back. It was a really good counterplay from Q there with the stomp to prevent the X mark into boat combination from landing. But threw his cookie away for basically nothing and didn't have an escape plan. So they'll get that kill. Nightfall going to work on the bottom tier one. Jabs will rotate back down to cover this, but there's more reinforcements arriving. This might be the dive we were talking about, maybe coming top. It will be bottom instead, Jabs. Jabs, Tombstone is placed, two TP's coming. Blast off is there, they burn his mana, but he pops the wand, gets a nice spear onto the Morphling, gets cookie to safety, Toronto Tokyo. Uh, looks like the Adaptive Strike will finish off Jabs. Toronto Tokyo, though, left in no man's land. He will be the trade eventually. Pepoon will still be happy with that. They cause all these rotations. They only lose the Undying. Yeah, bring the entire enemy team down there. You're just free farming on the Kunkka. You're pushing in mid on the Morph. He immediately dipped to maximize this. Oh, GPK, EMP. Let's see how strong it is against the Medusa. That's quite a bit. The Tomato comes out. <laughs> Not able to hit it, though. How can you say that with a straight face? It's a burning tomato. Haven't you ever seen one of those before? A burning tomato? That's right. That is not the name. That's fake news there. I can't Wait, read. Who says Chaos Meteor? Is that actually something people say? Invoker does sometimes. <laughs> oh, it's just Invoker. He has a rare voice line for GPK. it. Uh oh, okay. Tomato. He had a feeling Ghostwalk should be able to get him out now. Sentry placed a little bit too late. Although they did ping it up, so I think he was on the outskirts there with the vision. But now that Aurora is here, they likely just group up for this tier one, which. Bat Boom. Look to want to defend, defend. Yeah. yeah. Tornado EMP is quite the repellent. Just like so your BO. You. <laughs> you need to say something now. They only do a little bit of damage there. <laughs> just going to pretend I said nothing and just continue. That's, Love that. That's literally half my casting is ignoring you. <laughs> and you do the same. Yeah. It's the best half. And the, the, sad the half thing, where I'm ignoring you is my favorite. The sad thing is that it actually has translated to real life stuff now. Like, you'll talk to me, and I'll talk to you, and you will absolutely ignore me. The other day, you were walking down the <laughs> stairs, and I was next to you, and I asked you a question at normal volume, and yep. I was like, oh, he's really thinking about an answer here, because you took, like, 20 seconds to answer. I was like, 
you probably didn't hear me at all. I literally you were, tuned you out. And then I, I asked you again. I was like, wait, were you talking to me? And I've, then I said, how did you not hear me? You're like, I was really focused on walking down the stairs. I don't want to break my neck. <laughs> Just like I'm focused on this game, so I ignore half the shit you say because it's useless. Of course. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> But it really has bled over into real life. That is one of my favorite quotes from you this week, though. I was really focused on walking down the stairs. <laughs> has to be up there. Riero snags the damage rune as he's working on his Aghanim Scepter. Very even game, though. Bet boom. Again, the top two in peril. If they get this win, they secure it. If they lose, then it's a three-way tie for that second place. So there's still... We'll move on to the next stage regardless, but whether it's upper bracket, lower bracket remains to be seen. You, Yeah, you could make the case that they're playing for top three right now, which is, you know, kind of a weird way of looking at it, but it is the reality. If they win this game, they're guaranteed top three. If not, they have to start fighting in that lower, and of course, the opponent they will be facing in upper is already known. That will be Falcons, who are 6-0 and oh currently. Seem like an absolutely unstoppable team, and anyone going up against them will definitely not be the favorites but BetBoom would like to have the chance to get revenge at the very least in that upper. Yeah, and if so. nothing else, get another life, right? So you Ooh. you have a series where things can go wrong. Nice steal here from BetBoom. Oh, Boom. yeah. That's, That's going to feel juicy. nice and juicy. Yeah. Seeds of Serenity placed. Jabs has no idea. Oh, he does now. There's a tombstone. Uh, or there was a yeah. zombie attached to him. Hopefully he noticed that at least. For his sake. It's too I want to spread that plague. Mission accomplished. They will get the... Uh, no vision yet. It's about to expire. Little Shredder. Oh, no. <laughs> okay, they used Manta as sentry. And Snapfire, but they didn't get it. They That's still got right. the D ward, though. Yeah, but Beppin will take that. You don't give up the Tombstone Gold, you get a nice juicy stack as Aurora grouped up. And Radiant Bet Boom know it. Scanning. Bringing all these numbers for the Tier 1 bots. Radiant the question is, will Bet Boom defend this time? And it looks like the answer is yes, Nightfall. They're Showing very it. adamant about holding this tower. We've seen teams give up this tower relatively lightly a lot of the time, but... Yeah. Yeah, Bet Boom... I feel like this is a very important objective in this particular game, and I would agree with it. You want to... If you can somehow maintain more farming space in this type of game where it's like Morph against Medusa and there's... It's likely going to remain this quiet six kills in 17 minutes. The tower, even the safe lane one, starts mattering a great deal, getting that extra few percent efficiency of farm. By the way, against this, this EMP, does the Medusa need to itemize any differently? Like, perhaps um, a BKB? Or, I don't know if I want to say Hurricane. Maybe, maybe it's just the supports to be able to, to force staff her out. Pike is quite good. Especially when Invoker gets shard, so it starts pulling, right? You want to have a way of getting away anyway. So I think Pike sounds quite nice as a part of the build. Eventually, he'll go the Scotty first, which makes sense. You know, you want the you want the mana pool. I think the danger of going BKB is that if Invoker casts EMP and you have to BKB, then he can just force that, right? Uh, at basically no cost in every fight. And then you make yourself vulnerable to other things following up, and the net worth... Like, the cost of BKB is just so bad for Medusa to have to expend, so she wants to get it, like, fifth, sixth item in games where it's necessary most of the time. So I think I'd, she'd rather go Scotty Pike, I think. Okay. But then it opens some new opens up for some new problems then, because then, like, how reliable is Pike actually to save you from it against X Mark? So the combo is there for Bet Boom to bring him back in. Uh, 23's headphones are struggling. I think his keyboard... Also, as he wrote, hair pone, or maybe having a little bit of a stroke. <laughs> maybe the headphones are actually fine. That yeah, could be. No, he's actually investigating. That's them. a good shot of Toronto Tokyo. Thank you so much for that. Yeah, Toronto Tokyo trying to teabag the webcam. Love that. Appreciate that. He was about to do the whip and the nay nay. We did not get to see that. That's probably inappropriate. Yep, Speaking of, I've never seen you do the whip. The whip? I don't even know what that is. So. <laughs> I couldn't do it either. I'm not sure what it is either. <laughs> That's good. Would you 
better watch me nae later. Okay. Yeah, like, again, just ignoring you, because I don't know what that means. Need so, to restart PC. All right, that gives us time to talk. Oh, like, no. Thank God. <laughs> thank God I can ignore everything you say. Go ahead. Give me something. What throw do you me, want? Throw me a curveball. How about a trivia? For okay. You? Yeah, go ahead. Something yeah. that's Dota. No, I don't have it. Oh, anything. from me. Yeah, from you to me. That's Dota history. Not a stupid name. Okay. How old that's... are we talking? Dota 1? Yeah, I could go back to Dota. I, I, I don't know if people care about the Dota 1 stuff, but okay. I always I always find that interesting. What yeah. was the name of IO before IO? There was a name for yeah. IO before. The model was used in Dota 1, and the hero had a different oh, name. Oh, man. I feel like even if you say it, I won't know. I have no clue. God. Was it actually? Yeah. You're if kidding. I remember correctly. Really? I think it was called God for a short time. Wow. The IO one. That's blasphemy. How many spells did Invoker used to have? Oh, this one. So he has, what, 10 now, right? Yeah. Uh, I'm going to say, was it 30? 27. Ah, oh, so close. And you could have figured that out by doing math, but I knew you couldn't do that. So it was what, going nine, to be difficult. Nine times three. Yeah. Yeah. Three to the power of three. It's all the combinations of the orbs. Yeah. Uh, Interestingly enough, that version of Invoker that had a spell for every single combination had fewer useful spells than the current one does. That's because they had to be toned down, of course. They that Half the spells, or two-thirds of them, were utterly garbage, yeah. and like two were very good, and the other ones were okay. What, what were the good ones? Oh, don't ask me that. I don't I mean, I'm sure most of them were based off of the current spells in some capacity, right? Uh, some now, I think... It's it's hard to remember at this point. This is very old. We're right, talking here's like 2003 a for you. or something. Actually, it's not trivia. I'm just going to tell you a fact. Okay. That Morphling had a better model in Dota 1. Can you believe <laughs> it? The Warcraft 3 engine actually had more polygons than the current Morphling model, Cinderin. Oh, now that you say it, did you, do you remember there was a build in Dota 1 for Morph where you could focus on Int? Because he also had an Int version. He had a third? Hmm. It was something I, I don't remember exactly what it was you that did. That does sound familiar, actually. I think you went Dagon. I'm not saying it was good, but there was some sort of int thing. All right, we're back. That was a great trip down memory lane to the wonderful music of somebody breaking into some agent breaking into you somewhere know, in a flash game. I played Dota One recently. It wasn't that bad, other than like the hotkey situation, mm -hmm. which is atrocious. It actually was not bad. I was hitting hooks on Pudge. That was an awesome game. Too. Yeah, because you were playing against bots. No, they were real people. Okay. I was called a smurf. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be the first and only time that happens. Exactly. Don't worry about it. I was playing against infants probably in diapers. There's Lauren off. It's going to get torrented, but... I'm pretty sure you were probably playing against 50-year-olds <laughs> if you were playing Dota 1. Yeah, they probably are wearing diapers as well, though. So either way, it's correct. Playing against a stack of Nahas and his colleagues. <laughs> <laughs> That's where the rage came from, I guess. <laughs> the uncontrollable rage. Oh, 23 Savage. It's going to get x Again, no real team fight yet. As you might imagine, and that's not going to help things with that Midas now in GPK, but not like that's an abnormal pickup at all, but Miero, he has Torrent Storm, so they could try to take a fight. I do miss Nahas. Aurora. Okay, we're just going to collect. Yeah, we're, okay. we've been goofing off too much, Cinderin. Have we? It was yeah. a pause. People like uh, talking about details of CS mm. during the pauses. I've come across those people before. Yeah. GPK. Okay, very good. All right, so when's the first fight going to happen? When do you expect? Is it going to be the old Roche? Neither team yeah. really, I mean, Undying helps with Roche a decent amount. I definitely think Bedboom would like to fight now if they can to bring this Torrent Storm into play immediately. Play around the Tombstone while it still matters. Oh, 23, 23. Here we go. Max, he's going to use Stone Gaze right away. The Torrent does hit. Boat did not come, though. Nice torrent Manta. Storm will be avoided completely. Sticky Bomb slows him down. Don't think they're going to follow this up. Oh, but the follow-up instead is by Jabs inside the arena. Gets everyone from Betboom, basically. They're getting decimated inside the Mortimer's Kisses as well. Three dead for Betboom. Aurora win this fight easily. Yep. 
I mean, as, as soon as you open on 23 and he gets to disengage, you're compromising your entire formation, right? Like, you used X Mark, you used Torrent Storm, and you grouped up. And this is just, this is so easy for Jabs to just land this three-man arena, and they're letting the kisses rain in from the distance from Q. Very, very easy fight here from Aurora. Yep, that set up the Mortimers, it set up the Earth Splitter. They, they effectively gave Aurora the initiation that they can't find. Yeah. Because the dream for Medusa in any lineup, basically, is the enemy team goes on you and fails. It can't get any better than that. Medusa is a tank, so if you're wasting time and spells and positioning on initiating on her and not landing things correctly, you're effectively throwing away resources for a net loss, so you're just making the fight easier for the opponent than if you did nothing. And Aurora easily going to capitalize on that. Those kills, and they will get the Tormentor now, and that boom. We talked about it. Are they going to drop the ball today? <laughs> They seem to do it quite often, Cinderin. It is not looking good. I I think this game is actually quite dangerous in the sense that if Medusa has an Aegis and goes high ground minutes, let's say 25 to 30, what solutions do you really have? This is very important for Bet Boom to get this one. Yeah, it's not fast though. Aurora making their way down. The Echo Stomp was there as well, so. Aurora have ways to try to contest this. Nightfall just doesn't do nearly enough damage at this stage to take out Rush. He's already only at half HP right now. As the Medusa Illusions will scout this out. And now Aurora knows that Rush is not really going to be taken here. Bet Boom can't back off, though. <laughs> oh, they absolutely cannot give up this. They, they have to stay here and take this fight if, if it breaks out. But they will have all their spells soon again. Tombstone is the bigger one that's down for a bit. 30 seconds to go on that. Aurora will start poking their heads in. Yeah, they can start to go for Roche if they want. They're gonna scout it out. Jabs with the early arena. Using it more defensively though, this time it's 23 Savage with the Stone Gaze. Look at that damage from the Earth Splitter. GPK is dead. Save dies and buys back. 23 Savage is surrounded. Has to be a bit careful. We'll pop the Manta on his retreat. X finds him. Torrent Storm. The Torn actually does connect. Now the buyback comes out from GPK, and they have enough damage potentially for 23 Savage. He's out of mana now. As Nightfall connects, they will burst down the oh, Medusa eventually. Stomp. Do they have any follow Echo Stomp they locked don't. down four heroes, but the follow-up not there while the Medusa is dead. And now Aurora on the retreat. Yeah, Looks like they'll though. get out with everyone else. They'll probably get the Roche for this, but that was very expensive. That's two buybacks. God, look at GPK's net worth, by the way. Q is way more farmed than him, and that is a support Snapfire. Echo Stomp just going to slow things down, but eventually the Roche will go the way of Bet Boom. But it is not pretty. Yeah, the good news for GPK is he has Midas, so he will at least get some decent levels. And for Invoker, obviously a very big deal. Reckon he'll still, yeah, he will still be maxing out the Wex here. Yeah, that's two well, they're games. Still, they're having a good laugh at it, so... Doesn't seem like they're feeling the pressure too much, save keeping the morale high. They're not sure what they're laughing about. They're used to being in tiebreakers, I Maybe guess. Maybe save was like... <laughs> who of us do you think has higher net worth? And GPK was like, that's really <laughs> funny, dude. <laughs> oh my... I that's two games in a row, though. That uh, I mean, the Huskar just fell flat in the landing stage, but he did end up getting farmed. Yeah. Uh, just, you know, the hero inherently just, you need to snowball. In this game, the thing is, his net worth is going to be a lot more valuable than it was in the Huskar in the previous one. So even if he's like, let's say he's on par with the Mars, which is obviously not the case right now, but could easily happen over the next 10 minutes. You're a trusty mate. The hero's matchup in this game is just really good. Invoker is incredible against Medusa late game. We've talked about the EMP. That's just one thing. Ice Wallace is outstanding. Meteor is good. Deafening Blast is obviously S tier against that hero as well. People buy Halberd against Medusa for a reason. You have a hero that has an AoE one for free. Yep, true. So the pick made so much sense, but GPK's game has just been flat out terrible. And a lot of it really came down to that invasive maneuver Bet Boom did into the enemy triangle, which in hindsight was honestly completely unnecessary. Aurora might be ready for another fight. Mystic Snake. The 
Torn is going to be the trade as Jab's looking for an opening, but will have to exit. Good attempt there. It really feels like Miero getting shard could change this game so much, right? Like all of these situations where he's finding a Medusa or getting his X mark onto any support, being able to. Okay, interesting. Uh, being able to push Medusa into his team is very powerful in a game where the enemy team has no... I guess they have the cookie to get her out after. That's the only true displacement tool they have. Hold on one second, let me push this button real quick. Don't have any four steps. <laughs> <laughs> that so production has given us a nice little soundboard. So far it's one button with the bet boom sound. We'll try to save that for a special occasion. Yay! That one was not really the special occasion they were hoping for. No, I think. that was the test run. Okay. Nice. This one, however, is. Nice last hit. There you go. Sick. And of course, production very soon will be adding the Suns fan belch to this uh, little device that we have. So and gonna... tomorrow they will be adding the ooh aurora for when they have no games left. <laughs> I have, it'll be a cursed soundboard <laughs> for sure. Miero. Going for his BKB, a recipe away right now, and then going for Tidal Wave after the fact. And what what can they get out of this this Aegis for Nightfall? It's only a minute 40 remaining. Nothing I, really. I do feel like most of the idea behind it is just deny it from Aurora. Yeah, I think so too. I, I don't think there was a big plan of, okay, we're going to siege high ground, because frankly, I feel like it's borderline impossible for them to make an offensive move when it comes to buildings right now. So just keep the farm going. Get Nightfall to critical mass if possible. He is very farmed on the morph this game. The majority of the problem is in the mid lane matchup where Lornoff is ahead by 5,000. So it's the 50% of the entire lead. And the next 4K of the lead is Snapfire over Techies. It's incredible how farm Q is. Yeah. Game. But that's also what I'm saying. I feel like this hero is undervalued because during downtime, Snapfire is an amazing hero at farming. Yeah, Toronto, Toronto, Tokyo, Tokyo very good. Out here. 10k lead for Aurora. Bet Boom dropping the ball. But has it dropped too far? Will he be able to bend over and pick it back up, Cinderin? It's a heavy one. Radiant it is, scanning. but at the same time, Aurora's lineup Great. doesn't seem too big of a threat without the Aegis. So I think Medusa will be very hesitant to go high ground, especially once this uh, tidal wave comes out. There's a lot of risk of just getting out of position. I find Kunka to actually be a quite good hero against Medusa for that reason. She hates, she's very immobile, so the Torrent Storm is difficult to navigate. You can get tidal waved in. Yeah, I do wonder if the game goes late, if save is going to prioritize trying to get Ags. True. That's, That's actually good against Medusa, Medusa as well. Medusa just stands still for the yeah. fight, usually. Could be a thing. It's the BKB for the morph. The one time we've seen it, it did nothing because it was cast once. <laughs> I feel like and we've seen had it two it or like, three times. They each. had it like 25 minutes and they yeah. cast it once, I think. But what a cast it was. Yeah, it was very particle heavy. Very taxing on the computers. Uh, the butterfly is there for Nightfall along with the BKB Manta. And he's going for, well, it looks like he will be going for Phylactery Conda. At least it is a Crystalist to start, so I would assume that's the case. Which means... I mean, the, the fact that these heroes are so farmed on Aurora, like the supports especially, that I don't even know if the Kanda is enough to really try to get a one-shot off, like a shotgun type True. against them. It's also going to be hard to find the ET to begin with. It's one of the biggest assets of this hero is how far behind the fight it can stand. Yep, and there we see the butterfly now there for... 23 Savage and gonna finish his Disperser next and then knowing that Nightfall built a Butterfly will go MKB. Okay, let's see. Open Savage. on the Deusa again. He's spotted. Got some teammates nearby. Blastoff is there. Arena to counteract this. Do they have the damage? It looks like Save is gonna fall first along with Jabs. That's 23 Savage running out of man. He's gonna be forced out to the other side. Will be able to TP out. Mihara living on barely any HP. He's in so trouble far, so here. Two Wait for one for him. Lauren off. Waveform is there. Adaptive Strike gets deleted. And Q spotted by GPK. A couple zombies helping him out here as well. Cold Snap will... Huh? 
does get the glimmer off. The cookie to the low ground, but Nightfall Adaptive Strike, triple kill for him. So it looks like Miero did end up falling. I'm not sure what actually ended up killing him there, but it ends up being a three for three in the end. Thanks, Jabs, for the breakdown. I did damage. Yeah. Yeah, so this uh, this initiation, this was a, a good illustration of what they can do to Medusa when she doesn't have Aegis, but imagine an Aegis there, right? Like, they had to drop absolutely everything, and they still didn't kill her, but they forced her out of the fight so that they could go in secondary targets. But that was the full Kunkka combo, EMP, blast off, three mines, adaptive strike, waveform, and he still survived. So, but when it comes to Medusa, draining her mana is effectively kind of killing her, so... I guess you could somewhat count that. Still started ground for a little bit after and did some damage, but the reset was necessary. And that's a good sign for Bet Boom, because once again, once the once the tidal wave comes out, these kind of plays will be easier to pull off, but he's, is he actually not going to buy it now? He shift queued other items. I really feel like the tidal wave would be so good, but... Well, he could get it from Tormi. How many shards no, do they have cannot. on the team? Invoker is so <laughs> under <-farm. laughs> Yeah. Really taken. It would be a roll between him and save. 50-50. I mean, the EMP is is quite good. Yeah. The upgrade for that. But we'll see. And I do believe the... No, the Tormentor is actually not up for the side of Bet Boom. And they're going to smoke up. Oh, yeah, I didn't even realize that they just got it. Okay, so Toronto, Tokyo, that's how he got his top yep. shard. Yeah, attack. he is definitely not the one to buy that one. Radiant Hasn't done scanning. it basically the entire tournament, despite playing this hero so much. It's interesting to have as a save against Mars Arena, potentially. Which was, as a matter of fact, the primary Radiant reason that 23 survived there attack. was a well-placed arena from... Uh, from jabs, he placed it such that a lot of the projectiles from outside couldn't get in. Let's smoke again. That Very big sheep. moment here. This is the sheep stick reveal for jabs. Seems to be buying this on Mars more than any other player in this tournament. We've seen them generally prioritize other stuff. Ollie, that astral spirit, so good in these scenarios. So notice that Roche has been tickled a bit. Nothing really to write home about. And shield rune looks like on Nightfall right now. It's going to be extra tanky. This ward is really good, by the way. And I'm sure they're going to want to fight uh, while this is still up. It's 23 Savage. Going to be in range of X here pretty shortly. Has the Disperser. Gives them that extra move speed, but the X is there. This they want to fight under the forced. cover of the Tier 1 tower. A nice arena onto basically the entirety of Bet Boom. Torch Storm comes out. But the Medusa is looking A-OK, -okay, but Nightfall goes in. There's the blast off onto three, along with the disarm. Lornoff taking the brunt of the damage. Has the BKB trying to go high ground. Sunstrike not even needed. And you can see 23 Savage trying to waddle away. Five man Attempted stomp. TP out. Oh, my God. These Echo Stomps have been absurd. That could have been so much worse for Aurora. They lose their Lina and likely Roche to fall for Bet Boom again. I thought it was going to be even worse for Bet Boom, but they were just literally walking down in a straight line into the side of Aurora, but... Despite getting five man arena, Aurora couldn't chase. The Torrent Storm was, zone, was zoning literally the entire team. Yeah. So, that boom kind of pulled one on them there. I'm frankly very surprised that this was the end result of that situation. And they should be very happy. Not only do they win the fight, they get a tower, they now get Roche. And this is another Roche taken away from the Medusa. A nightfall. Likely to claim this one. GPK also close to Snapfire's net worth, which is big news. He's almost at position four now on the Invoker. Banner for Toronto, Tokyo. Radiance top tower He's talking about the, the uses that you could have, how they could be better at using this item. Maybe he's learned his lesson, Cinderin, to not cast it right away. But let's see. Radiance Courier has been killed. And the Tormentor did give save his shard, so still no shard for the Invoker or for the Kunkka. 
Although their Tormentor, I still gotta wait for yet. Looks like they're gonna have to start purchasing them, purchasing them pretty soon. That's what GPK has The fact has that GPK will buy this and Kunkka won't is very surprising to me. Yeah, I I would. I mean, I would assume after Octarine, he they're both great. Goes for it. Like both showers are really good, so I figured. It's not as surprising to me that GPK is buying his as it is that Kunkka isn't, but... Dyer's middle tower is Here goes tier 2 tower, Nightfall with Alacrity. 200... Four, about 420 damage per hit. We love that. Nice. No, that's what you say when it's 69 damage. Nice. Dyer's middle tower has fallen. Baited you. Into what? Saying 69. Oh, nice. So tier 2 mid for Bet Boom, tier 2 top likely will be given up as well. Sunstrike used for a little bit extra vision just in case. Second tower gone. Nightfall with the MKB, ready to pound on 23 Savage. Oh lord. Uh, <laughs> Alright, we'll have to BKB I eh, didn't want the Watcher anyway. Whatever. <laughs> yeah, all good. Yep, they knew this was that he went to the left. They have a ward down there, giving that information. Uh, he'll have fire. MKB soon as well. So the butterfly is being countered here to a degree on both sides. Yeah. It's something we haven't talked about very much in this game. We've been focusing a lot on the Medusa, but obviously you're playing Mars with Medusa and Lina going right-click build. Eventually, later down the line in this game, if Aurora find a good combination and they have their BKBs running, the heavy artillery from range is nasty. These two heroes, it's not even out of the question we could start entertaining the idea of a, of a little shredder multi shot from Snapfire. But he's eyeing up the eggs. Okay. Who's he gonna gobble up? Well, he could just use it as a save as well. Yeah, that's to get true. Get the Medusa the hell out of there. Fair. But obviously, the Mars would be the main initiator, I would think, that you yeah, use. He kind of doesn't want to be tossed in, though. I think for Mars, it's it's very important that you get to set things up exactly the way you want. So I think you would rather have the Mars do it himself with the dagger. Another tier two tower claimed for Bet Boom is they've cut the lead to around 7k. We're doing a pretty good job at maintaining the lead, really. They haven't really lost much off the top of it, despite giving up all the Roches so far. Less than two minutes to go on this Aegis. Nightfall. Gonna go high ground. Tombstone is placed, so grab ally can be used at any time. And this tower is melting. Waveform to dodge out the Echo Stomp. And a tombstone destroyed. But still. Three quarters of a tower, not bad there. Yeah, not too shabby. Minute and a half on the Aegis. What else can they get out of the map? Do they try to reset and go one more time? Or do they play it safe? Yeah, the shard finally gotten by GPK, so the EMP will pull units to the epicenter. Very annoying to deal with. Kind of a new mechanic. And Nightfall purchased his shard, so the Tormentor, whenever it does spawn for Bed Boom, it'll be guaranteed Tidal Wave. I feel like the only pull we used to have in Dota was Black Hole, right? Awesome. And now we have Invoker Shard and we have Razor Shard? I believe so. Was there ever anything else that pulled heroes in? We also have Reel In. <laughs> yeah, true. I mean, depends on what you mean by pull in, because there's Reality Rift. Yeah, that's a bit different though. It's like a blink, oh, right? Or off. Is it going to be spotted here? Gets out. There's officially the MKB for him. As every hero on in this game is just ridiculously farmed, it feels like. Except GBK. <laughs> he did overtake the Snapfire Savannah. He He's getting there now. He's gaining ground on the Mars. As much as we're memeing about it, this Invoker net worth is starting to matter. He's coming close to the Hex. He's coming close to level 20. Probably just going to straight up see the Alacrity. The, the Chaos Meteors one is interesting too, though. Let's see what his choice is. It will be the Meteors, because Alacrity is very good for his Morphling in this game, which seems to be a little bit of a Yeah, but three tomatoes situation. bigger than two, one. Well, both are correct. <laughs> <laughs> yes. 
You are right. <laughs> three is bigger than two and one, Cinderin, but combined, it equals three. Yeah, I'm just glad you added the both are numbers in case there was any confusion <laughs> about what we were talking about no, here. Just making sure some of the people watching don't understand fully. I'm here <laughs> for the where two or three people out there. And Miero. So it will be the refresher next. Not a huge surprise. And the real question is, when does this Tormentor spawn? Need a timer on that one. Yeah. There's, no, there's no timestamp on this. This doesn't help. That'd be an interesting thing to add a timestamp here. Yeah. I'm already adding all these other quality of life features. Why not? Yeah, I think Tormentor timer would be nice for sure. Doesn't necessarily have to be available to the players. That's fine. But for observing. And of course, the the Gaben face on the minimap when the banner is placed, which we don't know if it was. Uh, looks like it probably was at some point, because Toronto Tokyo doesn't have it. Classic usage. <laughs> it's so incredible that we don't even know. <laughs> I'm sure it did a lot in its time frame. At least they're not collecting them. Although that was really fun. I kind of hope they do that again. These siege creeps top. Nope, never mind. They looked a bit big, but no. There's nothing. I mean, it would have been a while ago. So. Yeah. It was a good time. Triple Meteor. GPK. Aurora's lead is getting a slightly smaller. As Dwindling. Time goes on. And there's the MKB for 23. Refresher on jabs. Yeah. And this is just going to turn into the old wait for Roche. As Tormentor is available, Nightfall will solo it, and there's your, your tidal wave you've been asking for, Cinderin. Wonderful. It comes. Finally. Medusa will get the 25 talent split shot, uses modifiers. Scotty. Could have potentially considered the other talent, actually. I, what is the other one? Is that the mana? Plus 1.7 mana shield per damage per mana. It's, yeah. it's a lot. You get a lot tankier with this. Obviously, you, a lot of the time, the Splate Mortifier's talent is kind of just a no-brainer, but I think in a game like this, perhaps you could have considered the other one. You don't have to do insane amounts of damage and orb procs when you have a Lina backline and an ET to cover you and improve your damage. So maybe... Creeps are poking at the, the high ground, which means Bedboom knows that Aurora are in this vicinity. And we can see Roche will actually be a relatively early spawn. It was 30 seconds, and now... Dyer's top it will spawn as Jabs will be the man in the pit. Question is, how fast can they do this? Bed boom. Need to contest. This is Refresher Shard, Aegis, and Worthless Banner. They smoke on the outskirts as well. This is very close. They are getting close. Miero, really tanky. Torrent is coming. Roche will fall. 23 Savage secures the Aegis. Tombstone is placed, as you can see, the Earth Splitter ripping through Toronto, Tokyo. And here comes Jabs via the Gobble Up. Arena comes through, but look at 23 Savage. Life number one bursted by Nightfall. And now he's kind of segregated from his team a bit. They're going to focus everything on him. Blast Off is there. His team has nothing in the tank, it seems. Echo Stomp doing a decent amount. 23 Savage basically out of mana now. Adaptive Strike connects. Torrent will keep him in place. He can <laughs> he's just getting bounced all over the place. Doing a decent amount of damage, but he does fall in the end. Cookie from Q, he wants to try to finish off too. But instead, he's going to get waveformed and right click down by Nightfall. And Ollie and Jab stuck in the tree line. They will be spotted. Cold snap upon Ollie. He will be the collateral. It's the tornado. Not going to need to find its mark. That's the Mars. It will be the lone survivor for Aurora. So, Batboom, give up the Aegis and Refresher Shard, and of course, more importantly, the Banner. But they do get most of the kills here. Yeah, those those damage numbers on Aurora, if you could look at them again, are just kind of pitiful, right? It's the Medusa doing everything. They, there needs to be more Lina in here. There needs to be more Mars in here. But the problem is the way this fight starts, Lina is stuck in the middle of the pit, getting, getting caught in the opener. You're gonna see the Torrent, actually, you're gonna see her already being dead here, so no wonder she didn't do any damage now. But the way this started was the blind torrent from Miero hitting the Lina, and then he goes for the torrent storm. She has to BKB. She's in the middle of the pit, no escape path. 
and they kind of just pile on her and kill her off. This could have been a really interesting situation if she had Aviana's feather, but she has a trickster cloak, so can't really reposition out of there. No pike is buying it now. Okay. But yeah, with a pike there, I think Aurora win the fight, actually. Yeah, bed boom. Want to take advantage of this. Alacrity on Nightfall is no joke. Fortification used by Aurora. They have the Medusa back in 12 seconds. Might cost them the melee racks, though. This is going to go down quick. There's the gobble up. Gleipnir to follow. LSA actually will not hit, but Echo Stomp does. There's the Mars. Okay, he actually uses the BKB, but the attribute shift was already popped by Nightfall. Tornado through Savage makes his way over Stone Gaze and BKB pop, but the rest of Bet Boom now on the run. Torrent Storm keeping the rest of Aurora just locked in their base. So they'll get nothing out of it. And Bet Boom secure the first barracks of the game. And now a damage rune is being spotted. Nightfall will TP out. But the X will bring him. Oh <laughs> the double. The damage rune actually disappeared, Cinder. <laughs> That's really sad. The illusion rune, not bad either, but. <laughs> oh, damage rune, nice. Save it for me. Okay, X me. I need mana. He comes back. Huh? <laughs> Aurora will secure their old, own Tormi, Ollie. Not the one they wanted, but yeah. maybe that was the only one they could get at this point. No, they have only one other shard right now. Right. Oh. They only have the fire, so it would have been him or the Mars. Yeah, Mars shard definitely would have been a nicer grab here. RNG assisting Bet Boom a bit. Can they capitalize? As Nightfall with a refresher now. Look how close they are to the base. They want to jump 23 Savage. Tidal Wave at its ready. Torrent does not hit though, but the EMP pulling him in slowly. Triple Tomato Meteor, whatever the hell you want to call it. Center is Nightfall. Pops the BKB. They have the burst. Down goes Medusa. The buyback still at the ready though. The Torrent Storm doing so much work. Ollie takes a tumble, immediately buys back in the game. Do Bet Boom want to dive any further? Or will they reposition for another set of barracks? Looks like they're thinking about it as Nightfall with the Alacrity is going to focus on the top lane for now. Waveform out to avoid the Echo Stomp. 75 seconds of the Medusa. They're going to have to buy back at some point. They'll potentially find the opener here as Jabs jumps in, gets the Sheep, but the Attribute Shift already popped. So the. Morphling is going to survive as a result, at least for a little bit longer. Alacrity's still on him, but he's getting bursted! My goodness! The damage from Lorinov, absurd! 23 Savage now going on to Miero. He'll pop his BKB, the Gleipnir stops the teleportation, and they'll find their second kill. So a good buyback in the end. This the right there. shift was going to save him, but not enough HP in the world for Nightfall. That is the showcase of what Aurora's lineup can do if they get to attack for like a few seconds. This time, Lina gets to hit stuff. And it's the world of difference compared to the Roche fight where Lorinoff was taken care of. Now he has the pike, so he can more frequently get himself in a position like this one where he just gets to wail away at the Morphling. Or any hero for that matter. This is the hardest kill. Keep that in mind. If they catch anyone else like this, they die in a matter of two or three seconds to the Medusa as well as the Lina. Just heavy range artillery there. Obviously a special kind of situation where Bet Boom are a little bit out of spells, resources. They're in a position that is a bit compromised and obviously wanted the Medusa buyback that they did get. Let's see how much Aurora can get the other way. 40 seconds. So there Far is the axe for the techies. Are so we're going to get to see the bombs increase. I forget what the name of that spell is. Is there even a name? Minefield sign. It's just minefield sign. All right. No. It's placed. It actually did place it. Of course, it does have a little bit of cast time, so harder to use in, a, in the midst of a fight. But Aurora not forcing the issue as the game net worth wise quite even. Barracks advantage still on Bet Boom's side, and I think, again, it just comes down to the next Roche. I think Bet Boom are in such a good position right now, specifically because they have the Dusa buyback taken care of. If they catch her one time and kill her off, the game ends. So They'll have to do that in the next few minutes, or else yep. it just refreshes. Of course, it's a, it's a timed window, but feels well worth it to try to play for that for the time being. Yeah, it looks like Lorinoff also does not have his buyback, Cinderin. He's yep. working on the Daedalus. He's buying out. Figures if his Medusa dies, then the game might just be over anyway. 
Haste run for Nightfall. Haste. How much room does he have to grow? He's going for a Daedalus, so with the Refresher backpack eventually. Or the BKB. What do you think about the Lena 25 talent? Do you like it? The Lena 25 talent. It's a very, it's a very special one. It's one of the newer ones. 150% crit on targets affected by Dragon Slave. That's actually what he took as well. Yeah. Uh, it is interesting, isn't it? I think it's cool. It's not like it's uncommon. You can see it gets taken in two out of three games. It's just a very special talent in my mind. Yeah. Mars will get the arena one for the yeah. regen. Wait. <laughs> well, after the last time Jabs went for the other build, which yeah. was the Divine Brooch, did not go so well. I really like that he's not going for the Mars damage build this game, because I think he has one job, and that is set up Lina and Medusa for success. You don't lack damage. You just need to catch people correctly. And with the Wind Waker, he's going to have an even easier time doing that by protecting himself or protecting a core that gets jumped on to really set up the arena perfectly. It's a late Roche, two and a half minutes. So this Roche off will be a thing to remember. For two and a half minutes. Yeah. Wind Waker's starting to come out as this late game beast of a game will continue. And of course, this is the Aurora special, late game scenarios. Radiant are scanning. Oh. Oh, heads up below. GPK gets hit right on the noggin. <laughs> Don't think anyone's going to be able to scout it, but there is a damage rune top. If you heard these sound effects, you'd think you were watching Angry Birds or something. That is a very, uh, like, Coyote versus Roadrunner type of sound, isn't it? <laughs> the, the, it's kind of out of place. The first, it's the gobble up, but then the sun strike right after was like, wee! Woo! <laughs> But nothing happens. This, uh, this amplified damage rune would be huge if either team identified that it's there. Could be the difference maker in this fight, but nobody has vision. No. So, probably going to stay there until the Roche is alive. Whoa! Okay. <laughs> Aghanim Scepter for Ollie. You don't see that every day. That's the BKB, right? Yeah, for each target that you hit. Yeah. With your spirit, once it returns, you get two seconds of debuff immunity. And this has one purpose. He wants to hit the stomp, and then he wants to run into Morph so they can one-shot him with their Lina and Medusa. That's true. That is the old-school combo. The panel mentioned this briefly. They picked Morph into ET, and we haven't really seen too big of a problem for Nightfall because of this, but obviously when the game goes late enough and ET gets big, he can just melee the Morph. I think... Probably looking to maybe buy a Ghost Scepter so he can reliably just walk next to the Morph and not get killed off by him instantly, but maybe you're fine either way. Morph will kill you quickly if he gets to hit you in the current state of affairs. We have Glimmer, you have Force Staff if it gets too scary, then you can back out. We'll see. Roche, 10 seconds. The mine will detect him immediately. This will be a good usage of the minefield sign. True. Which he does have it ready. Is up. Nightfall gonna get X'd and push out top quickly. Yeah, Roche officially up, so these teams will eventually realize that. Eventually. And Bepin will be the first to see it. Taking out these illusions so they don't give any vision, but of course they can't stop the Astral Spirit, and now. Aurora knows. As Roche bashes Nightfall just for effect, Waveform will be used to dodge the Echo Stomp. Jabs already with the BKB, finds Toronto Tokyo in the tree line. He's going to pop his Greaves. He wants to As get Ollie, bound, though. He's just buying time. Use the Astral Spirit, Toronto Tokyo keeping everyone back. And Nightfall looks like they're going to get a free Roche here, but you can see Ollie trying to go in. What is he going to steal here? Did he get the Refresher Shard? He might have. He dies for his efforts. It's 23 Savage, BKB, TBs. Loranoff not going to be so lucky. The LSA not going to hit anything. The Tidal Wave bringing him back. He's been abandoned by his team. No buy. And that's
two dead. He still doesn't have the buyback. And that is enormous for Bet Boom. Five versus three for the foreseeable future. What a non-play from Aurora. They're just standing there getting zoned off by Undying, by Kunkka Wave, they by... They got the refresher shot. <laughs> invoker spells. They get zoned off by everything, and they're like, fuck it, I'll jump in on ET, try to see if I can steal anything. Gets the least important item there. Obviously, Banner, the most important. <laughs> Eight is second most. <laughs> Onto the high ground. Bet Boom goes. Going to try to force out any potential buybacks, but of course, we know they don't have them right now. There's the gobble up. Stone Gaze from 23 Savage is applied. Nice spear onto the Morphling with the Blast, or the Cookie to be applied as well. Do they have the damage? It's gonna be close. He gets the Yules off just in time. Waveform in, now the focus is on the Medusa Nightfall. He is getting so much HP from this Satanic. And that is gonna force the buyback onto the Medusa. Double kill for Nightfall, as these members of Aurora are dropping like flies. The Rax goes down now, Wind Waker from Jabs. Gonna force out the other buyback onto the Snapfire, but Jabs is dead. No way to get back into this game. Tidal Wave not making the full connection. Triple Tomato for the road. As Q will go back into the fountain as his base is getting decimated. BKB used from 23 Savage. We'll actually use the Refresher Shard. But now it's a two versus five. The Echo or the Elder Titan will be back in just a moment. Nightfall trying a 1v1 battle here. Pops his Refresher, will waveform away. No more BKB for the Medusa. As the tier four is about to drop. We'll see if Bet Boom want to play this a little bit safer. They still have the Aegis, as Nightfall is going to get X'd. We'll heal up a attack. bit more. Salve, okay, very nice. And they're going to try to finish this game once and for all. Jab's dead for 50. Echo Stomp does hit. 23 Savage, you can see Ollie getting that BKB charge, essentially. The Glyphnir from Lorenoff, he has to back away, though. It's 23 Savage with the Stone Gaze save, looks to be done. He can buy back though, and you can see the minefield sign doing a good amount of work as the Laguna Blade tickles Miero, just brushing it off as the Ancient fully exposed. Nightfall with the Alacrity, pops the BKB, wants to focus on the Ancients, pops the Satanic, focusing now onto Ollie, Waveform in as well, Blast off, will connect, and the Disarm to follow onto the Medusa, completely useless as she's just getting bounced around left and right as the Ancient will fall. Bet Boom wins the series, which means no tiebreakers.